is wow, right? Am I the only one that feels the wowness of everything that is going on in the world? Ah! Oh my goodness, a pandemic. What? What? Oh my gosh. <sighs> it has been quite a learning curve for me, for everybody I'm talking to. It is so interesting. And I just wanted to come on today and just take a moment to breathe and to help in any way that I can. So as I'm talking, if you have questions, please um, type. I think I'll see it. I'm going to go ahead and um, uh, check on my phone. I'm using this new software, so I'm going to try. I hope it's working right. <laughs> But I wanted to come on and just share um, some like little things that you can do. I know everybody and their mama is doing a Facebook Live, right? Like that seems to be the thing to do now. And I think it's beautiful in that people are reaching out, right? It's not just, let me just send you this email. People are genuinely reaching out and using what they have, their gifts, their talents, their expertise, whatever, to just share and to help. And I know that can feel overwhelming, you know. I know for me, when I turn on my newsfeed and there's like 15 Facebook Lives there, I'm like, whoo, let me see the one or two that I can watch right now, if any at all. So um, I just wanted to offer this to you as a way to just have a couple of tips. Because if you're anything like me, you're an unintentional homeschooler. And like I always say, there's a reason why I send my kids to school. Because this homeschooling thing, it's just, it's not my gift. It's not my gift. I have many friends who are homeschoolers. I'll talk about them in a little bit. But homeschooling is just not my personal gift. And um, yet here we are. Here we are. Now, one thing that I can say is that um, I do have a lot of experience with family chaos. <laughs> and things just sort of being thrown in the wind. I have that personal experience. And I work with a lot of clients who are often in the midst of chaos and things like that. So um, I do feel that there are some things that I can add. And I know what's really, what seems to, people seem to be craving right now are practical tools and tips. There's enough inspiration out there. Of course, I can lend some of that too. But I think having practical tools and tips that as soon as I finish this live, I can use in my family, in my home. Um, and that's what I'm going to offer to the mix. Uh, now, I also know we don't have a lot of time because unintentional homeschoolers, kids are home, right? And I know me, I work from home, which that's been interesting, um, if you want to call it working, <laughs> with kids in and out and teachers and all this other kind of stuff. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. So we have to make it work, right? So I'm going to do just some little short videos. Um, the first thing I want to share, and let me see if you can relate to this at all. So... Yes. So do you have ever heard people say things like, um, if my second child had been my first child, they would have been an only child. Like you ever heard somebody say that? Like, cause the, the second child just felt so much, like so much, took so much more energy. That's kind of how I felt about this homeschooling journey. So last week, my daughter was, her homeschooling started. And the teachers were like, she's seven. Teachers were like, okay, here's a Zoom link. And they had packets and we went and we picked up the packets from like outside the school and had all this, everything was color coded. And I was like, Psh, this is a piece of cake. I, why haven't I been doing this all? This is so easy. What? And they, and they were like, just put them in front of the computer on Zoom and we'll just, we'll, we'll, we'll work with them for a couple hours every day. I'm like, gold. So then this week, my son's school started. So I'm thinking like lulled me into a false sense of security, right? So I don't even open the emails till Sunday night. And it's like, <laughs> okay, every teacher has a PowerPoint that you're supposed to read and go through. And some of them want you to go through it with a kid. And some of them are just for you. Then other teachers are like, sign up for this program and then sign up for that program. But you have to use this e in this program. You have to use your email and then add your kid. But on this program, you have to use your kid's email. And then you have to add you. And then you show up on this day and this time. And this guy wants you to show up on this day and this time. And they, they have to have this work done. But that way, I'm like, what? It was crazy. It was freaking insane, right? So.
So I wonder if that's how it's been for you all. Which week <laughs> or which child represents you? Has it been more like child one, like it was with my daughter, or child two, like it was with my son? What's that been like for you? Let me know in the chat. I really want to hear from you. Um, and you know what? I'm just going to grab my phone and just see. I probably should have done this in the beginning, but I'm just going to make sure nobody's posting anything um, that I can respond to. All right, let that load. So what I wanted to do is come on, like I said, real fast and just share some things with you. And um, okay, cool. Here I am. So as you can see, this live is about four keys to transform daily family chaos into calm. And again, I pull these from uh, my own personal experience and also working with a lot of families. These are four things that if you want to calm the chaos in your family, whether it's due to a pandemic or anything else, these four things are super important. Um, now I said, I know we're all busy, so I'm only going to go over two today and then I'll come back and do another live and do the other two. But I really want to share these bite us chunks, right? Cause we don't have all day. <laughs> all right. So, um, the four are routine, rest, creativity, and connection. Okay. Routine, rest, creativity, and connection. And so you can see the first two were sort of like bringing down routine and rest. And the other two were more like expanding out creativity and connection, right? Cause we need both. We need the yin and the yang, right? We need, we need all of it. Um, so today I'm going to talk about the routine and the rest and what that can look like as you're working to help calm your the chaos in your family, the daily chaos in your family. Okay, so routine. Things that are really important during this time, like our kids and us, we're used to getting up and being out the door and getting things done and all that stuff. But now, like, my daughter's school, hers still starts around the same time. She's got to be on at about 8.30, but we don't have to go anywhere, right? So technically, she could probably roll out of bed at 8.15, brush her teeth, throw on some clothes, stuff a roll in her mouth or something, and be in front, be like two minutes early, right? Um, my son, a lot of his don't even start till 9. But what we've started doing is we get them up. They're up at like 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning because we want to keep the routine. We want to keep things as familiar as possible. Kids like familiarity. Okay. So making sure that they wake up at the same time, that they go to sleep at the same time that you wake up and go to sleep at the same time, right? Because rest is important. Um, having a schedule for the day, super important. It doesn't have to be, I had one client who was like, you know, I'm trying to figure out like, what did they do during school during what time? It doesn't have to be like that doesn't have to be like that, especially if you have your own schedule. It's okay to work your kid's schedule around your schedule, right? I'm really happy that they do everything in the morning because um, for me, like I get my best work done in the morning. I see a lot of my clients during in the morning, you know, so getting things like lives and, and my business done while they're in class is really helpful for me. All right. Um, and I want to give I'm going to give some examples of some schedules in a minute, because if you have young kids versus older kids, those schedules might need to look a little different. The other thing is to have that's important schedule things on Sunday. Like I told you at the beginning, what I did was I opened up my uh, email at like um, like 1030 on Sunday. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> yeah, what is this? Right. Don't do that. <laughs> You know, as soon as you get things from teachers, even if you don't have time to focus on it, just open it up and do a quick scan so you know what's coming, right? Because then you can fit it into your routine as opposed to it needing to be your life in that moment, right? Something that you feel like you have control over, like, okay, I can get to that, you know, in a few hours or tomorrow or whatever, that's fine. As opposed to the sky is falling, I need to do it now. Um the other thing that I think is really important with routines is allowing them to have input into the development of the routine. You know, if your child is old enough to talk and plan like, like a make believe, you know, session or something with their, with their doll or whatever, they can help you plan a routine. So having them like, okay, asking them like, when would you like to do blah? When would you like to do why? When would that feel good? If you have that flexibility. They don't as much because they are in class. But if your child has the flexibility to be able to say like, 
well, I want to do snack before I work on my letters or something like that. Give them that. Give them that space. Because right now in a world where um, control seems like at a premium, like it doesn't feel like we have a lot of control sometimes over a lot of what's going on. It raises up a lot of anxiety. Giving our children the ability to have control in any way that we can is really, really, really key. Um, and then the last thing um, is screen time agreements, especially for older kids. Sit down with them. And I'm going to do a whole separate live on this because I know this is a thing. I've had clients who've said to me, since they're not in school, even though they don't have access to their phones at school, usually they're not in school. They think it's just another spring break. So they're just on their phones. And if I tell them to put the phone down, they get angry, you know. So screen time agreements are super, super important. And I'm going to do another one, like I said. So I'm going to post these if you want me to in the um, chat. But here are some examples of like this is something I downloaded off the Internet. Thank you for Jessica McHale Photography. This is just a general um, screen time, like a daily schedule if you have young children. OK, like I we followed this the first week before Autumn got in her class. This was the schedule we followed. It was so good. I loved the morning walk. They went crazy for the morning walk, getting up, getting out. It's raining, but I still want to incorporate this since I'm getting them up early, right? We're not sleeping in until five minutes before they need to be on Zoom. We're getting up early because it's part of a routine. So this is a way, and you can flip around the block. Some of these blocks I had to flip around to make time for like, okay, I'm going to have clients during this time. So maybe we'll move creative time here and there, you know, that sort of thing. So this is one example of something that you can use if you have especially younger kids. If you have older kids, this isn't the exact one that I'm using, but um, in a, something like this is really simple where I went through all the PowerPoints that all the teachers sent me and I just wrote in like, okay, he's gotta be in class here, he's got this here. And then at the bottom, I have like a little section for homework, like, and these are the little things that he needs to do now. If I had done this earlier, I could have tasked him to do a lot. He's 11. He could have done a lot of this. I took on the responsibility to write the thing out because I was like, we don't have a lot of time, right? So, you know, again, this is something and, and it just hangs up. Let me see. Do I have it? If I had it here. So this is actually literally the one that I use. I don't know if you can see it. It has the time and the date written in and, and the blocks are a little bit bigger. Um, as you can see, and I just write in and then there's a section at the bottom where I can write notes and homework and stuff like that. Download it off the Internet. Super quick. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. Just something so you can keep your sanity. OK. Um, ah, let's see. Let's get these off my screen. OK. So I notice now that we are at 15 minutes. Is that accurate? Did I really talk that long? Let me see. No, it says 10 minutes maybe. Okay. So what I'm going to do is, I don't know how I would get to 15 minutes. That's weird. All right. We're going to go through the next one. This next one is, it's kind of self-explanatory, but we don't do it. Okay. Um, but it won't take me long to go through this one. So rest. We need rest. Okay. I say it so much. And I'm going to say it again, guys. Self-care is family care. Self-care is family care. You can't say I don't have time to take care of myself. Then you're not making time to take care of your family. Take it from somebody who spent last summer in bed 14 hours a day because she didn't take care of her. No, two summers ago because she didn't take care of herself. All right. I didn't take care of myself like I was supposed to. So I am preaching this from the mountaintops now. Self-care is family care. All right. So making sure that you're making time for yourself through all of this. The other thing is our kids. We might. There's some of us that are like, oh, my gosh, I'm with my kids. Twenty four, seven, three, six, five. Don't worry. I get it. They feel the same way, people. <laughs> OK, there are times where they're like, oh, my gosh, I'm with my parents. Three, six, five, twenty four, seven. Right. There are times where they need time away. It's OK for our kids to be bored. It's OK. We don't have to be their 24 seven entertainment cycles, especially those of you who've got young kids. All right. It's OK for them to figure out their own thing and use their imagination. It's actually preferred. OK, they need that creative time. 
Um, the other thing that I want to put out there is set your non-negotiables and let everything else go. Set them and let it go. So non-negotiables are things like the kitchen's got to get cleaned or the beds have got to get made, right? Have maybe three household non-negotiables, maybe four. Get the kids involved so that they can help with them too. And then cut some slack on it. Maybe the bathrooms don't need to be cleaned every day. Maybe they can be cleaned once a week. Maybe laundry doesn't have to get done every day. Maybe it can spread out till a week. You know, set things up because we've got so much else now. Now we're teachers and moms and priests and therapists and blah, 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 blah. We're all of these things for our family, right? So make sure that you realize you can't do it all. You can't do all the things as much as we like to think we can. You can't do all the things. So set the non-negotiables and let other things go so that you have time for that rest. Um, and then ask yourself, what's one thing I can do to bring myself joy every day? One thing, just one thing, one thing, and then do it. Commit to yourself that. Remember, self-care is family care. So hopefully this was helpful. If you want more of this, you can come back to this page. The other thing I'm doing starting April 3rd, I'm starting a, um, a group. It's for unintentional homeschoolers or people who are experiencing a lot of anxiety and isolation and overwhelm. Um, and it's, you can go to teamjoy.rocks to find out more about it. Teamjoy.rocks, not .com, .rocks. Teamjoy.rocks, get it? Um, and it's based on three pillars, calm, confidence, and communication. And that's what it's all about. It's about helping us to get tools to be more calm, helping us to get guidance and information like this to uh, feel more confident in our day-to-day -day. and then not communication, community, sorry. And then also just having people to connect with. All this distancing that we're having to do, it can be tough, right? So having people to connect with so we're not feeling so isolated all the time, super important. So check it out. I'll be back tomorrow to talk about the other two pillars and thank you for tuning in. Also, if you want more information on something else, if there's a specific topic that you're curious about, Drop it in the comments below and I'll do a live on that too. Okay. Bye.